Welcome, folk. Welcome back to my YouTube channel at Andrew Westberg 1126. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing very well. What do you think of the hat? Let me know if you're interested in getting one, okay? I know where to get one. Not from this country, of course. Let's talk about the soaps. But what do we mean by the soaps? Are we talking about the young and the restless? Are we talking about the bold and the beautiful, the guiding light? Yabo? No. Not talking about that at all. Talking about Irish Spring Soap. Smells so good when it's activated by the shower water under the shower head. You should try it sometime. I don't know what soap you used to, but try switching to Irish Spring. Smells very fresh, very nice. Alright. Mix it in with your pheromones very nicely, too. So, let's see. What topics could we discuss today? Uh, how about the Bible encouraging its own Bible reading? Did you know that it did that? Not many people know that. Huh. Okay, so it does encourage... Uh, Bible reading seven place, several places. Do you know the word shamana? That's a Hebrew word. It's different than shamana. If you ask any Jewish person, anybody well versed in the Hebrew language, they will tell you there's a difference between shamana and shamana. So let me see if I can find it first before I say anything. One of them means specifically a Bible discourse. Okay, yeah. Shamana. It means public discourse, okay, reciting from Mosaic Law, listening to the voice of Jehovah, at Deuteronomy 17, 19, Acts 13, 15. I wanted to give you a list, as much as I can, about the encouragement of Bible reading and how it should be habitual, maybe even daily, definitely daily. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Chapter 30, verse 16. Chapter 31, verses 9 through 14, 25 through 28. The book of Joshua, 1, verse 8. Chapter 8, verses 30 through 35. All right, let me flip over a few pages. Ah, okay. Acts chapter 13, verse 15. First Timothy. 13, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 and 2. And so what else do we have here? So that's about it for right now. Some of you folks are saying there is no Jehovah. Would you say, if you're a Christian, that there is no God? You'd probably say that God is Jesus and you'll never leave Jesus, right? Jesus is always in your heart. Well, when you say there is no Jehovah, in essence, in effect, you're probably saying there is no God at the same time. Let's look at the Bible, God's Word, the Bible, in this case, 2013, Revision of the New World Translation of the Holy Scripture. You can look it up in the King James Version, Authorized Version, if you want. Let's go to Psalm, chapter 14. Let's see what it says about those you feel that way that there is no Jehovah. So, 14 verse 1, that's in page 760, 760. It says, the foolish one says in his heart, there is no Jehovah. Their actions are corrupt and their dealings are detestable. No one is doing good. People are very disillusioned. When they say there is no Jehovah. It's also in tandem with Psalm chapter 53, verse 1, 5, 3, 1, 53, verse 1, stanza 1, excuse me. That's on page 793. It says, the foolish one says in his heart, there is no Jehovah. Their unrighteous actions are corrupt and detestable. No one is doing good. So sorry for your sadness, for your apathy, but in, in effect, in essence, there really is a Jehovah. If you look at Zechariah 2, verse 13, 
has be silent on flash for you taking the action from the only dwelling on his throne. So there's no need to be an atheist, you know. So let's talk about Babylon the Great. Do you know what Babylon the Great is as mentioned in Revelation chapter 18? Goes along the lines of Gnosticism, Colossians 2, verse 8, about not listening to people's philosophy. And you know, people have a different depiction of what philosophy means in the medical field. They think it's a good thing, but really, you shouldn't be listening to philosophy. I think what they mean is principle, but you don't want to correct your doctor on that because they don't just make matters worse. You know, just try to let it go. All right, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So let me see what I can find here about getting you some or most of the list of scriptures of Babylon the Great, but just in case you're interested, just in case you ever wanted to know. Ah, uh, here we go. How about we start out with this Psalm chapter 115, that's 115, stanzas 4 through 8, 4 through 8. 1 John chapter 5 verse 21, Titus chapter 1 verses 11 through 14, and chapter 3 verse 10, Second Timothy chapter 2 verses 16 through 19, Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 27, but another one, Colossians 2 verse 8, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, Ephesians 4 verses 4 and 5, 4 and 5, Exodus chapter 20, 3 through 5, chapter 34 of the same book of the Bible in Exodus, verse 14, 34, 14, Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17, all right. Is there any other that I'll let you know in the future? Let's talk about the word apostasy for a moment. It goes along the lines with the word Gnosticism, G-N-O-S-T-I-C-I-S-M. Originally, it had the definition in most dictionaries as equaling to the word prevarications, which means a deviation from the truth. Now, in modern times, it's been changed to abandoning or being firmly a part of a religion or a politics or a political body or a religious body of some sort. Well, if you ask any one of Jehovah's Witnesses, including me, they're going to look at you and say, uh, 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 why is that? Well, according to Jehovah's Witnesses, if you're a member of the political body, the part of the political elements of the system of things, then you're an apostate with Jehovah's Witnesses or against Jehovah's Witnesses. So, and I find that true. I don't really believe in politics. I believe in being politically neutral, which is the same as Christian neutrality. We don't take sides. We're not opposed to your politics. We're just not for it either. I mean, you can do it if you want to. You can engage in politics if you want to. But for, as for our part, as Jehovah's Witnesses, as Jehovah's people, we will not engage in politics. That is our neutral stand right there, a firm resolve, all right? So, then the, on the other hand, the government says, well, if, if you're not part of a political body, if you're not part of a governmental, elemental system of things, well, then you're not a Christian. Well, they've got the line blurred. You know, the government is confusing Christianity with the government, with politics. There really is a very clear dividing line there, whether you want to admit to it or not. See, at John 6.15, it says, Jesus withdrew. That means he was withdrawing from politics. Jesus was not a political figure. Oh, wait a minute. I know. You're going to get mad. You're going to put your hand up there and say, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. You're going to say to me, Yes, Jesus was a political figure. No, that's not what this was about. According to John 18.36, it says the kingdom was not from this source. He said he was on his way to the Father in heaven, to the heavenly government in heaven with his father Jehovah. 
And he said the kingdom was not from this source, not from the earthly source. So just to make the explanation short, to be brief, just to abbreviate, Jesus was not a political figure. We are true Christians and Jehovah's Witnesses do not engage in politics. So you can't really call us apostates for not engaging in politics. You, you can call it true Christians for remaining steadfast in a Christian neutrality or a political neutrality by not taking sides with either political party anywhere in the government or any human government here on the earth. You can say that. So that's a little bit of a dilemma we have there with the modern definition of apostasy. Does it exactly go along with the current definition of prevarication? Okay. Anyway, what else would I like to show with you? How about not giving up? The scripture in the Bible that says, Do not let your hand drop down. That's about not giving up. If you look in the Greek part of the scripture, the second half of the Bible, there's actually a place in the Bible that says, Do not give up. And uh, it goes in tandem with the, with the uh, Hebrew scriptures at Exodus 17, 11. Not letting your hands drop down. Well, how about if we look that up? Exodus 17, 11. As long as Moses kept his hands lifted up, the Israelites prevailed. But as soon as he would let down his hands, the Amalekites prevailed. So, don't ever give up. When you're trying to win the spiritual fight for Jehovah, the, uh, God, don't ever give up. You'll be rewarded in due time. You'll be re rewarded very healthily. Okay? By our God, Jehovah. So, what else can I bring out to you? I know we've got some time left, so if there's anything you would like to clear up for me, uh, don't forget, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really am looking forward to the subscriptions. If you like my channel, please subscribe. I don't mean to lose your attention. I'm trying my best to keep your attention and be very entertaining as possible, at the same time giving a fair exchange of information. I just need a fair exchange of information from you. What are you looking for? You want more music? You want me to write more songs? You want more acapella from me? What kind of topics do you want to discuss about in the Bible? Maybe I can come up with a few fresh scriptures that I've never seen before. I may have to do research on that, but I can do it for you. Just leave a comment in the comment section. Please like the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel at Andrew Westberg 1126 and that'll make me very happy. That'll make my heart rejoice, all right? I would appreciate it. You don't have to feel sorry for me or anything. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for you to feel sorry for me. I'm just looking for your help. I have a certain requirement there with getting a thousand subscriptions, and after that, I will work on a little bit more. But for right now, I hope I can do it by the end of the 28 days, all right? Just to let you know. All right, uh, just before we go. Okay. Well, let's say you have a parent on their deathbed, and you're grieving, and you know they're about to pass. Or maybe they've been gone for a while. Maybe they've been gone recently. I know I only have one parent left. That would be my father. He's in a nursing home in Ohio. What happens when that happens? Um, is Jehovah you're still your heavenly father? Well, sure. Psalm 2710. Let's read Psalm 27, verse 10. Stanza 10, excuse me. Says, even if my own father and mother abandon me, Jehovah himself will take me in. Even if my own father and mother abandon me, Jehovah himself will take me in. Very simple scripture right there, very heartwarming, very reassuring. Don't lose your mind totally. 
For all the things I've lost, I miss my mind the most. Isn't that what you hear sometimes? Don't lose your mind. You can't go wrong with Jehovah. All right, folks. Well, I'll leave it there for right now. I put up this video, and I'll try to come up with some new information in the future. Thank you, folks. Take care. Thank you for watching, though. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a comment. Remember to like and subscribe.